Thank you for calling Reviewer TV. This is Jeff. I can help. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. You said one thousand dollar. All right. Okay. Um, no problem. We'll do our best to help you out. Okay. Diel, Diel. Commendation. Transfer connect. Okay. Hello, good morning. This is Jeff again from Reviewer TV. So we're going to discuss about how to de-escalate. So most of the newbies or even the newer are actually having issue with escalating customers' concern. So we will talk more about it. Alright, so paano ba? Like the escalate a customer or how to pacify a customer. So one the first thing that you need to know, there are actually three. Um, the most common is you have to do an empathy statement, acknowledgement statement, and assurance statement. So that's the most common. Alright, so before we start our discussion, let me just get my um, headset. One, two, three. So, okay, so first thing, um, when it comes to the escalation, so I can say that this is my expertise. Um, so, let's talk about it, alright? My first question is, na try nyo bang mag ask ng supervisor call or sub call? Most of the time, ayaw nila. Di ba? Totoo yan. Okay, so, bakit ayaw magpasub call ng mga supervisor or SME? So, hindi naman lahat ganun. So, just to tell you the truth, um, there are some SMEs that are really approachable. And there are a lot of SMEs who doesn't want to do the soup call. And some TLs as well. Bakit? Here's the reason. Alright, so first of all, um, punta tayo dun sa bad things. Um... One of the reasons for SME is because marami silang trabaho. Marami silang iniisip. So, SME is somehow pressured um, sa dabi ng hinahandle nilang tao. Usually, sa isang nesting, um, mababa na yung 20 na katao. So, if there's only one SME, so most probably, ngarag na ngarag siya. So, um, and at kung puro soup call ang nangyayari so most probably mainit na ulo niya so kailangan nyo intindihan yung SME um, although that is their job uh, tao din siya alright so supervisor naman so bakit ang supervisor sometimes ayaw magpa soup call a supervisor nga sila. So, for the supervisor's uh, part, here's the reason why. So, first thing, if you're a nesting, um, you have to, like, basically encounter everything uh, because you're just starting on, on, on that account. So, you have to know everything. You have to uh, make sure that uh, you learn from the scratch. So, um, of course, kung kailangan talaga ng soup call, magagawa naman ng paraan yan. But for you to learn, you have to handle um, how to deal with a customer. Alright, isang most common issue na usually ni-encounter ng mga newbie, even the nerd, 
in a new account is new tools. So new tools, new learning. So we're not familiar with yet. So even a tenured representative who's not familiar with a tool, of course, uh, this, uh This is also for a newbie. All right, so what's the difference between newbie and a tenured in a new account? First, so la yung pinakaiba. So the only um, advantage of the tenured agent from a newbie is, is uh, you know how to handle a customer. They already know how to handle a customer because they have experience. Um, but when it comes to new account, of course, lahat kayo sabay-sabay. New process, new tools, new everything. Unless that previous representative is from the same account. That's a different thing. All right, so let's go, let's go back to why SMEs and supervisor doesn't want to take the soup call, which is most common in, um, in nesting. Actually, uh, in nesting, major uh, pa silang tawagin. But after nesting, which is the when you're already on the production floor, so the expectation is that since you pass the nesting, um, the expectation of the supervisor, the manager's SME, if there is an SME on the production floor, mostly none. Um, the, ex ex the expectation is that you can handle yourself. So um, less supervision. That's why you pass testing. So you have to deal with the real thing. Like you have to fight your own battle. All right, so if you're already on the production floor, as I mentioned, it's a battle. It's a war. It's, uh, yeah, we treat production floor as a battle. Um, because we're battling for our stats, not, our, not only our stats as an agent, but the stats of our team leader, of course, the stats of the team, lead, team leader, that will be the stats of the manager, and the manager, and the site. So imagine, your stats will determine how good your site is. All right, so once you're already on the production floor, so most probably you will only have one PL, TM that's going to support you. So imagine, like if lahat kayo papasub call, paano na lang yung TL nyo? Kawawa naman siya. Everything is a uh, team leader, usually marami ginagawa yan. Uh, reporting. That's the most common. So you have to bear with them. So that's why we're going to teach you how to de-escalate. All right, so paano nga ba gamitin ang acknowledgement statement and um, empathy statement and assurance statement? So let's say for example, the customer is having issue with a bill, which is most common. Um, so how to use it? Uh, acknowledgement statement, you have to acknowledge the concern first. So they are having issue with the bill. Let's say the bill went up. So you acknowledge that the concern is about a bill or about the bill going up. And how do you uh, use the uh, empathy statement. Um, by the way, for the empathy statement, um, you can relate to your customer, you know, like putting yourself in their shoes. So, say for example, um, it's about a bill. Yeah. Um, as a customer, I mean, as a representative, you are also a customer in um, well, the different services, of course. So, you can say something like, um, I'm a customer too, and I do understand the frustration when it comes to bill going up. But you have to follow up with an assurance statement. 
So I'm here to help you out with the bill. No worries. I do understand how frustrating that is. All right. So I'll give you an example on how to use acknowledgement statement, uh, empathy statement, and assurance statement. By the way, um, when it comes to issue of the customer, you don't always say sorry. So you only um, say sorry if, if the uh, issue is actually about the services. If it is not related to the services, you don't have to say sorry. You can just uh, simply uh, use um, yeah, acknowledgement statement. But let me give you an example, all right? All right, so first thing, um, not all customers are the same. So especially nowadays that uh, we have we have a customer called Marites. <laughs> um, I'm not that familiar with Marites because uh, I'm not updated. Anyway, um, when it comes to the escalating customer, all you have to do is say, to really know their concern so you have to know um, what's the root cause of their concern and if they are repeat callers or um, that's the first time they, that they call about that issue so knowing that uh, let's say for example they have uh, called in a couple of times already so you will be able to know their issue or uh, their, their previous issues with uh, checking your notation, of course. So, but the thing is, karamihan <laughs> ng mga representative, you will just do short notes or notation sa account. So, that's the problem. Uh, that's one thing that we should prevent to happen. Um, that's one thing that we need to, to improve. So, we have to put a clear notation on the account in order for us to help each other. Um, especially kawawa yung, yung other representative na makaka-receive ng call, especially kung galit na galit na si customer. Alright, so after, um, let's say for example, you were able to check the annotation of the customer um, with your previous transaction or previous um, call. So, you'll be able to know, determine what will be the resolution. So, if there is no resolution, uh, you have to assure the customer that uh, you will do something. You will work with your team. Um, you will do your best to help, especially for those accounts that, that is uh, service very important. Um, you have to provide your, your assurance statement, strong assurance statement. But of course, you have to give the resolution. If they need a time frame, let's say, for example, this is for delivery, um, yeah, late delivery. So most likely you will have a record of it. Uh, the transaction from the start to the middle to the beginning. Or, uh, I mean, sorry, from the start, from the middle, to, I mean, from the start to the middle to the end. So usually, uh, my time siya. So makita naman dun uh, what happened to the transaction why it was delayed so you have to explain to the customer you have to be honest with the customer but of course honesty is not enough for some customers uh, they will demand more that they will demand to get the, the item or the product but um, one thing that you can actually do is assure them that you'll do something maybe you can coordinate with um, other departments to help them out or one assurance that you can actually do is maybe if you're allowed to call them back to make a follow-up or email them, text them, uh, that's how you deal with them. So what if the customer, I mean, if the concern is not really somehow, or somehow we can't resolve it. So yeah, that's the most difficult thing. Usually those are customers that are, um, well, Mga 100 times na tumatawag and hindi pa rin na-resolve ng issue. So, for those type of concern, um, nakita mo sa notation, nakapakahaba na yung transaction niya. So, um, that needs a special uh, attention. 
So you have to really check with your supervisor, even manager, um, because you know that the concern, the concern of the customer is not res being resolved. So you have to do something for the customer. You have to have that heart to care for the customer because your job is to actually help the customer, um, not just to earn money. All right, so here's my sample spiel that I usually used um, way back when I was an agent. All right, so let's say, for, let's say for example, the customer's concerns about a bill, which is most common. So um, here's um, what I'm going to do or what I'm going to use. So first, we acknowledge the concern of the customer. Let's say the bill went up, like say $5 to $10. Um, you have to acknowledge that. You have to empathize with the customer. Um, relate yourself put yourself on the customer's shoes. How would you feel or how you will feel if the bill went up without you, I mean, without uh, you being informed by the, the company? Um, also, um, you have to provide a strong assurance statement before the end of the call. Okay, so we will, I will not do <laughs> like a, uh, like the whole call or mock call. Um, what I'm going to do is the, just the opening spill um, that will include your um, acknowledgement statement, um, empathy statement, and assurance statement. Thank you for calling Reviewer TV. This is Jeff. How can I help? Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm real sorry that you were having an issue with a bill. I know how frustrating that is. I'm a customer too, so I don't want to have an issue with a bill, my bill as well. So uh, I will check the bill for you, no worries. And um, rest assured that I will do my best to help you out, okay? All right, so that's just one of the example of the uh, spills that I'm actually using. But what you need to actually learn is how to customize your um, spills. So there's a lot of uh, different, there's different customers, so different concerns. So you have to, you don't have to use a generic word, a generic um, response like, I'm sorry to hear that. That's very common. And don't, and most of the customers uh, doesn't want to hear, I'm sorry to hear that. They will just say, I'm sorry to hear that too. Right. So, and um, the understand part that, I'm sorry to hear that. I do understand. Sometimes it's a negative thing, um, because that is a most common thing that we use. I do understand. I'm sorry to hear that. That is common, but got outdated nasha. So yeah, uh, we have to customize our our responses to each caller. You have to treat them unique. Um, you have to give them experience, the best experience. Whatever account you're handling right now, uh, it can be a telco account, it can be delivery, um, whatever. So you have to focus on their issue. And then, uh, of course, make sure that you do uh, know how to resolve their issue. Uh, just follow the process, of course, you have tools Maximize your tools. Um, if you'll be asking for a supervisor, you have to de-escalate them first. Uh, once, twice, three times, or a third time, if you can. Um, for some account, a supervisor will not be available. <laughs> will really not be available, trust me. Um, most of the time, uh, they're, ha they're doing a lot of tests, emails, reporting, and most of the time, they're meeting sila. So, especially for those who's working from home, it's really difficult for us to actually um, to ask for a supervisor call. Because you, you don't want the customer to wait for a long time. Um, then... All they have to do is to make sure you de-escalate the issue. 
make sure that um, the customer will be able to um, understand that you are the expert. So they need to trust you. Um, that's one thing. Uh, on side of the call, so in order for the customer to trust you, you should sound confident. Uh, this is one of the, let's say, tricks of the thing you heard. So you have to sound confident uh, on side of the call because that's, that's, that's uh, I mean, the customer will not be able to actually see you. Uh, they will only be able to hear you. So they will have an impression that I'm talking to the expert. I'm talking to one of the professional customer service. So if you can maintain that all throughout the call, the customer will trust you. All right, so I think that's it for me. Um, I hope you were able to actually gain something from this video. Um, just minimize soup call. So let's do our best to de-escalate. Um, yeah, good luck for the newbie and for the thing you're doing, whatever what you're doing. Um, so, Good luck, and if you like this video, if you'd like to see more about uh, Call Center, I will be discussing more about it. Just subscribe if you want to, watch if you like to, and yeah, whatever, whatever you want, alright? Bye.